Now, in continuation, we're seeking to reveal more about what this, this eye is all about. As we've just revealed, this eye that you find on the back of your dollar is in the prophetic word of Scripture in Zechariah chapter 5, chapter 5, verse 6. And here we already went through this, but let's go through this again, the King James Version. Zechariah chapter 5, verse 6, and I said, what is it? And he said, this is an ephah that goeth forth. He said, moreover, this is their, look at that key word, their resemblance through all the earth. Now when you look at the KJV with the Strong's numbers, which is a breakdown now of each particular word, and you click on the 5869 or look it up for their resemblance, you find that it's the Hebrew and Shemitic word oin or ayin, ayin, really oin, oin, 5869. They say probably, they try to act ignorant, but they do give the truth, probably a primitive word. And they say an I, literally or figuratively just like this particular eye that we have right here we can say this eye is literally an eye and in a figurative sense in a kind of a word picture sense as we find it right here it's an eye but let's go on with the definition and the revelation that it's not their resemblance as king james version of the bible has it but it really should be their eye, their oin, their eye. Now, when you look up all the meanings related to this word, oin, or eye, you get to find out that it's by analogy a fountain as the eye of the landscape. So a fountain is the eye of the landscape. And what does a fountain give? It gives water. And an eye can cry, and an eye also brings forth water. It says, next, affliction. Affliction. Outward appearance. Then it says, plus, before, or think best, color, conceit, be content, countenance, displease, eye, eyebrow, sight, face, favor, and as we go further in this particular definition, let's pull it up right here. Favor. Then it says, fountain, furrow from the margin. X him. X him. Plus, humble, knowledge, look. X me. Open, openly, not. Please, presence, regard. Then it says resemblance. So you see at what stage we find the word resemblance then it says sight x the x them it says think x us well x you x yourselves what kind of word is this or what kind of sense can this mean but one thing is clear the first and the key meaning is not resemblance because look how far down the list is found now we're going to give you another before we reveal more of what this eye really has to do, especially with this age of uh, Illuminism and secret societies and, and all this Luciferian, Satanism, demonism that's going on in these last days of white supremacy. Let's go to the King James. Let's compare. Let's see if the Jews, since this is Hebrew, but the Christians obviously see the word their resemblance. This is their resemblance through all the earth. Right? But let's go over here for a moment. And you see right here, this is the King James Version of the Bible. You see right here where it says, um, this is an ephah that goeth forth. This is what it says in the King James Version. He said, moreover, this is their resemblance through all the earth. Now let's look at the Hebrew for a moment. Here's the Hebrew. Right? Here's the Hebrew. And let us go to this particular area in Hebrew. Here's the Hebrew portion. Over here, verse 6. You see is is Zechariah. You see is Zechariah, verse 6. And if you can read the Hebrew, you'll see 
that it basically says oin. Can you find the Hebrew word where it says it's there oin? It's right here. It says oinim, 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 oinim. It says zot, zot oinim, zot oinim. Right? Kaval, kaval, ha aret, kaval ha aret. So here's the word. It says oinim. Now, here seems to imply some sort of a plural sense, but let's look at what the Hebrew, the Jewish translators have. The Jewish translators have right here, and I said, what is it? And he said, this is the measure, the eth, the ephah, that goeth forth. He said, moreover, get this, this is their eye. This is their eye. You see that right there? This is their eye in all the land. Let's look at the footnote down here for a moment. The footnote says, this is their eye. Their eye. Their eye in all the land. It says, according to Rashi, the measure is a symbol of what? Dishonest trading. The measure is a symbol of dishonest trading. Dishonest trading. Make you think about Bernie Madoff and what's going on with the whole economic crash and October surprise. He explains this is the measure of the punishment, it says, of, look up here, of those whose eyes are in all the land to deal falsely, making the ephah small and the shekel great. And then it has Amos V-I-I-I, 8 and 5. It says their punishment is carefully meted out, measure for measure. Now, kimchi... He gives this interpretation. The measure, it says, the measure that thou seest indicates that there is an eye above them. That there is a what? An eye above them that seeth their doings. The all-seeing eye. Now, the RV or the revised version has this is their resemblance. Now we get to what's in our so-called King James Bible. This is their resemblance. Then it has numbers X, I, and 7, or 11 and 7. This is the picture or description of them as they are in all the land. This is the picture or description. So we see clearly that the so-called Hebrew or Jewish version tells you straightly and translates the word oin or oinim, you understand? It translates it correctly, while in the King James Version, it just has resemblance, resemblance. But there's much, much more to this. Let's return over here for a moment. All right, so now that we got that part out of the way, let's see what our... Brother Gerald Macy, who has been so misquoted and misused by the so-called Luciferian Satanistic uh, New Ages in their war against Christianity and religion. Let's see what Gerald Macy says for himself about this. Now, this is roughly about page 168 of a book called A Book of Beginnings by Gerald Macy. And here... Let's just read part of this for you. Here, Gerald Macy says on this particular point that the oracle as mouthpiece of the deity figured on the effort was the feminine symbol. I want you to, to bear that in mind. The feminine symbol, the moot or mother mouth. This was the same image as that of the woman who sat in the midst of the 
a folly called wickedness. So there's a woman that sits in the midst of the ephali, or the epha, rather, called wickedness, whose resemblance was through all the earth. On account of this similitude, Macy goes on to write, the mouth being the same symbol in epha, or Ephod, the ephod, the weight of lead, the weight of lead was cast upon the mouth thereof to dam it up when the earlier worship had been cast out as horseship, as horseship. So the worship, the earlier form of worship was cast out, not as worship, but as horseship. Now, see, Macy is clearly referring to this epha or epha and extending it now to what the Bible prophets saw and understood. Let's go further. The, the keba, the keba is the genitalia muliebria, the muliebria, the genitalia muliebria, a pleasure chamber and the vault of heaven. You know, in the Bible, we talk about they worship the goddess of heaven. It goes on to say, in Hebrew, this is the primitive type of the Kaaba, of the Muslim at Mecca, the feminine abode. Now, it has another Hebrew word. The, the translator has it somewhat backward here, but one is, is uh, Gawa, go, and one is Gulf. It says the gawa, gawa, or the gulf, or the gulf, is the belly, the womb. And then it says right here that the keber, the keber, or the keber, is a cave, a hole in the earth, a tomb, like the Ethiopic word. This was a place of divination, like the cemetery found it on the oracle of the womb or the degenerate motherhood. Now, Isaiah speaks of the Kabirs who sit in grave vaults or the Kibirim, the Kibirim, and seek declarations concerning the future. Now, this sounds a lot like this New Ageism and this stuff that's going on, this Illuminati shit. Right? It says the abode of demons. This origin gives appropriateness to this expression, the graves of lust or the kibrot ha ta'ava, ha ta'ava or the graves of lust. The graves of lust. Now, the kept, the cob or the cave represented the secret place, the abode of kepha the Typhonian genetrix kept in the Egyptian is a concealed place, a religious sanctuary. Kab means to give birth to, and the birthplace symbolized by the hinder thigh, the kepish or the kept mount of the north, the high place the eminence of the female cult. So in our day, they will call this um, feminism, the female cult. In the margin, the gob is rendered the brothel house or the whorehouse on account of its primitive simplicity as the image of the gabarot, Gavrit is how they'll say it in the Hebrew today. Gavrit, which is to say missus or the mistress, the lady of kingdoms. And we know this prophetically from, from um, the prophets speak about the lady of kingdoms in Babylon. And it says the queen of heaven. Now, Macy goes into much more of that, but he's pointing to this woman of wickedness or this demonization, the demonization of womanhood, 
You understand? And then also what the Lord has to say about this particular type. Now, Macy may be a little bit too heavy for some and many who are unstable and unlearned. They twist what he has to say. But now let me show you what it's really talking about here. Let's, let's look up one more um, reference. Maybe it's this book. It might be the next book, but let's see if it comes up right here. So we have this right here where it's speaking about Joshua within the prophetic book. I think also um, Zechariah as well. And the stone with the seven, seven eyes, the seven eyes of the feminine Jehovah, the stone of Typhon is to be re-engraved by the male God, quote, I will now engrave the engraving thereof. The woman that is called wickedness with all her symbols, all her sigils, is to be cast out. She who had sat in the midst of the ephah, she sat in the midst of this symbol which is like an eye, according, according to the interpretation of Zechariah 5 and 6, in a certain emblematic figure, this mouth was to be stopped with a weight of lead. This is why it says in Revelation, where it says about the, the mild stone is cast down, and it says with thus, thus with violence will Babylon be brought down. They're generating this by all their programming. The ephah in Egyptian is the hept. And the word also signifies the seven, an ark, a shrine, a measure. The ephah was the image of the iniquitous through all the earth because it was the feminine type. So now when we really look at this eye, let's look at this eye again. What's really behind this eye? What's behind this oin, this resemblance? This, their resemblance in all the earth. What is that symbol? What is that emblematic figure of the degenerate femininity or the old motherhood? Can you see it? Can you see it? You want to see it? Well, here, you've seen it already. Now, notice this right here. This is, on one side, this is Nikki, this is Little Kim on this side, Little Kim, in the symbolic posture of the degenerate mother goddess or the degenerate feminine principle. This is her right here. Now, little Kim came before this one over here, but she is also doing the very same symbol, in fact, seeking to outdo her predecessor, but still perpetrating that very same imagery this very same imagery, and we could show you some archaeology dating way in the past, and they find where, where they don't find anything else from these long dead gone tribes. They find some etchings and some carvings and some paintings with this particular symbol. So these tribes, which are long deceased and gone because of that old mother goddess, that woman of wickedness that was cast out, you see, that's the first, that's the Babylon type. You see, this is the Babylon type. Now, one must recall that in the scriptures, there's another woman besides Babylon, the, the rightful woman, which is the new Jerusalem. But this here is what's behind their symbol or symbology in all the earth. Another point that we just want to make since we have the imagery the imagery available to, to show ones and ones. Let us uh, bring this up. Well, you already know this is on the dollar. This is, the, this is your so-called dollar bill. This is the so-called uh, uh, a Europeanized version or perversion of the Eye of Horus. And this right here is an artist's rendition of the pyramid with the blue-eyed, all-seeing eye right here. And the Muslims have some interesting to say about this so-called one eye, you understand, but now we know that this one eye was already prefigured in the scripture in Zechariah 5 and 6, but you will either have to get a so-called good uh, Jewish version, like right here, where they'll tell you that 
this is their eye in all of the land and not just rely on the so-called King James Version, which will say this is their resemblance. So the Jews over here, they know the truth, you understand, in their version. But then the Christians have the um, perversion, einem, ein, einem, zot einem. See, it's right there. So the Jews over here have it correctly translated. This is their eye. Not just resemblance. It is a resemblance, but it is an eye. Now, one thing also, if you notice over here, one thing also, if you look at this over here, you can see it's the same sort of sort of uh, shape. If you artistically understand it, it's the same sort of shape right here in the two. If you look at Nicki Minaj and put her next to the eye, you understand? Nicki Minaj next to the eye. And then you put her predecessor over here, little Kim, next to the eye. You understand? Next to the eye. You see it's the same shape. It's the same symbolic shape. But now that pyramid right there, what's interesting, it's not really the pyramid, it's not this pyramid. If you know anything about uh, geometry and shapes, you can see it's a totally different angle of this pyramid, you understand, and the pyramid on the dollar. But the real pyramid that it really is, is this pyramid right here, or these pyramids. If you recall, this is the Maroe. These are the Maroe or in the Sudan. This is why the Sudan was like in the news a lot over the Darfur and other things because they want to they wanna continue where they left off. And where the Roman Empire left off was in the Maroe. They did not go below the Maroe. So we have in World War II, starting out World War II, Mussolini um, is seeking to invade Ethiopia, the whole Ark of the Covenant, Raiders of the Ark thing. But what they recognize is they really have to go back you see, go back to where their predecessors left off. So if you look at this pyramid and this pyramid right here, the interesting thing you'll notice is the very same angle. This is why we superimpose the eye on top of this pyramid. And as you can see, it fits. It fits the right angle. So it's not an Egyptian pyramid, so to speak, but it's actually a Maroe or the Sudanese the Ethiopian pyramid. This is really an Ethiopian pyramid, what we've been called the Ethiopian pyramid or the Kushite pyramid, you know what I'm saying, and not the Egyptian pyramid. You can just look at the angle and see the whole difference in the angle of the triangle to notice the difference right there. That's just a curious point that no one really seems to touch on but I'm sure that ones know. So it's another way of them putting out information, some information, but then still leading you astray with distraction, just like we found within the King James Version of the Bible for their eye. The translation and every other word was correct, except that one word there that would reveal. Imagine if that was there, and people could look in their King James Bible, far going to the strong concordance, the 58, what was it, 99 or 69, and look it up and just see it right there without having to look it up. Then they would realize more of what the method behind this particular madness is. So this is that symbol of the woman, the woman of uh, wickedness. This is the symbol of the woman of wickedness who is in that effort who is in that unrighteous measurement that is symbolized by this eye. And notice the eye is detached because the eye is, the eye is able to float. It's able to move around. This is the eye in all the earth. Every, everyone, if you take this off of the dollar and give people around the world the dollar, the, the spell would be broken. This is why they keep money in circulation because of this powerful symbol these powerful magical talismans that they have on here. I mean, this is, 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 has so many things in it, you understand? But this is, this is the centerpiece right here, this particular eye. Even if they go to a cashless society, they first have to 
bring everybody on board first, probably try to put a chip in everybody or something else or create some other form of holographic magic because when you see the dollar, you know what I'm when you think of the dollar, what you don't think of is this, but this is the magic behind it. This is why they suppress within the Bible, you understand the translation of the Bible, this important, very important word, which would reveal both their, their particular symbol, you understand, as well as this woman that's known as wickedness. So once again, go to Zechariah 5 and 6. Look it up. See this word right here, resemblance. You understand, when you see this word resemblance, then look this word up. And when you go look this word up, you will find that it comes down to this, oin, oin, which means an eye, both in the literal sense, literally or figuratively. And this matches and meets the bill for both of them. So shalom, Rastafari.